Happy Friday, Moz fans. Today I want to talk about some of the threats posed to Google by recent advances in large language models and natural language processing and chatbots and this kind of thing. And I want to talk about how Google might react to some of these threats because that's obviously going to affect us whatever happens as SEOs. Now the lens that I want to, to look at this through is thinking about some of the different kinds of query that we currently use Google for. Really, it, it's kind of a, an artifact of, of Google's dominance in the last decade or two that we use Google as the go-to tool for such a varied set of, of users. So I've got some example searches here, and obviously this is just some random things that came into my head. This is not representative of everything people use Google for, which is even more varied, but got like a commercial query, running shoes, 50 pounds. So a lot of people have know now, and uh, the data's been around for a few years. Uh, Amazon is actually a bigger product search engine than Google in the US. More product search journeys start on, on Amazon than on Google. So that's, that's not anything to do with, um, with large language models, but that's sort of some context to, to this scenario for, for Google. And then we've got things like uh, pancake recipe, sort of very informational, uh, uncontroversial, where, yeah, actually a chat AI can do a pretty good job just sort of aggregating all the different recipes that it's consumed in its training set. COVID symptoms, way more authority sensitive query, right? So at the moment, this is kind of a strong point for Google because Weirdly enough, we actually do trust, as consumers, we trust Google more than we might trust something like a, uh, an NLP right now, an, an NLP, an NLP model right now. And then uh, MozBlog, so this is your bread and butter navigational web search, where really a web search engine, this is what they originally set out to be good at, right? And they are the sort of natural tool for, for a problem like this. Whereas for some of these other ones, it's not obvious that what I want is a website at all, let alone a web search engine. Now, I think the interesting thing here, so I talked about how Amazon was probably the natural competitor for some of these product queries, but it's a more complex picture than that. So though Google is trying to compete directly uh, with this threat, with things like the product updates, like making sure they are a good product search engine. And if you want to be a bit conspiratorial, you could say, well, you know, maybe they're trying to make sure that Amazon affiliates aren't too dominant in the in the SERPs. It's also the case that you know these are big money terms for Google in terms of AdWords. But like I said before, we're using Google for for everything these days, and have done for some time. And part of that is making sure that you're locked in with these kind of queries, you get in the habit of using Google, you're in their ecosystem, so you're more likely to use them for, for this kind of thing. Now, in I've written lost leaders here, and I think that's an interesting concept, an interesting way of thinking about this. In retail, you might have a lost leader, which would be a, a product that the store does not make much money on, or it might even lose money on, but they've got you in, so you're gonna buy the high margin products as well. So these kinds of query, these are not so obviously easy to monetize, right? But they can be lost leaders to get us engaged when we do make these high, uh, high margin searches. Now, that's kind of why I've included this search here, because I want to explain why these searches, which might seem like they are not, you know, something like a chat AI response to this is actually very expensive to, to produce relative to how easy it is to monetize. And you can kind of see that with how Amazon and Google have both struggled to make money on their sort of home uh, chat devices, you know, Alexa and I think it's called Google Home. They both sort of struggle to make money on those because these kinds of query are hard to, to monetize but they are lost leaders that will engage you for, for this kind of thing. So that's why they're important. And obviously, for this kind of query, this is the one where Google is most obviously threatened by things like the new Bing and things like ChatGPT and that kind of technology as an alternative to a search engine for now. So how might they respond to that? Well, obviously, 
if you can't beat them, join them. Google is launching Bard and their original announcement on February 6th. And most sort of, uh, most sort of logical predictions are that, or suggest that it, it was going to end up in the SERP sooner or later. At the moment, it's a separate interface to SERPs, but it seems like it will end up looking like a, a SERP feature sooner or later. And then we should expect to see more and more sort of knowledge graph results. At the moment, there are a lot of things you can search for on, on Google where you won't see a website as a result, right? If you search for something like five liters in gallons, then you won't see a website as a top result. You'll see a knowledge graph result. And I'd expect that to become more and more common because that is a better answer for these kind of queries often than showing a website. Now, what about COVID symptoms? What about the more authority, authority sensitive query? Well, I'd say the threat here is kind of the other way around. It's not that Google thinks you might use a chatbot to, to ask for COVID symptoms, although in time you might. It's more that if Google's own results are not high quality, if Google's own results were written by AI, then they've lost their differentiator, right? At the moment, we trust Google more than we would trust some of these new technologies, more than we would trust some other search engines. They need to maintain that edge. And the way they maintain that edge is by making sure that their results are written by people, and or by, at least by authorities, or at least checked by authorities, whereas some of these alternatives are not. So that's why you see things like the Helpful Content Update, which now looks extremely prescient. That was you know, late last year. Uh, and also Core Updates. You know, core Updates are Google refining and improving its algorithm over time, making sure they stay ahead of the game. And similarly, that goes to these kind of queries too, right? They have to make sure they're still the best at this kind of thing. At the moment, things like Bard and things like the new Bing, the, the chat interface on the new Bing, don't really work for web search. But in time, there's no reason why they, they couldn't. So Google has to maintain an edge in this area as well. So that was a quick uh, whistle-stop tour through how I think Google might react to, to some of these new threats. Let me know what you think on, on Twitter or on Mastodon or uh, on any other, or on LinkedIn or on Facebook. I'd love to hear more people's opinions about these kind of emerging trends.